in this part we will continue with the circulatory system we have seen which different sinuses are uh, present and the heart which is 13 chambered is present in the pericardial sinus now what we are drawing is a lateral view so if a cockroach is cut laterally then what all parts are visible those structures we are drawing so that we are able to understand the location of all the chambers so this is the heart neck is not so big but we are drawing it big so that we can show all different compartments so this is prothorax mesothorax metathorax and the 10 abdo segmented abdomen we will not draw the segments we'll just draw the lines so that we know that each chamber of heart lies in one segment of the body. Now let us draw these uh, chambers of heart. We have drawn those chambers in the previous video and each chamber had these, this kind of shape and the other one fits in here and the valves are there. So I'm drawing the first one. The first one is a little longer one and it is in prothorax then there is the second one which is in mesothorax the third one that is in metathorax and then in all 10 abdominal segments and as we talked off so here all the segments are going to be there and the last one say this is the 10th abdominal segment so let me draw the one which is in 9th abdominal segment and this is the 10th one. So 10th segment has the last chamber of the heart and it is blunt ended. That means all these chambers, they were having two openings. One opening on the anterior side and the other opening on the posterior side, which are called the ostia through which the blood is going to enter into these chambers. This one is closed from the posterior end. We have seen that the complete body is divided into sinuses with the help of the diaphragm or septa. So I am drawing these septa. The upper one is the dorsal septa. The lower one is the ventral septa. And ventral septa. And sometimes they are also known as the diaphragms. We have also seen the alary muscles which contract so that the blood actually gets filled into these chambers. Now how is the blood going to flow in this heart? The contraction is postero anterior. That means first the posterior that means the 10th chamber is going to contract when this contracts, the blood will come into the ninth. When ninth contracts into eighth and so on. So the flow is in this direction. Now blood flows through this and there is a tubular part of the first chamber. This is compared with aorta. That is the main artery which is taking the blood. Now the blood is going to come into this part. That means here there is a cavity and we call it head sinus the body is divided into sinuses this cavity where the heart is located we have already labeled it earlier this is the pericardial sinus the middle one is visceral sinus the ventral one is perineural sinus so now we have added one more sinus that is in the head region. So when the blood leaves the heart, it first comes into the head sinus. Now from the head sinus, it goes into the two sinuses that is perineural and perivisceral. So this is how the blood is going to flow. Now the blood flows from here. And ultimately it goes into the pericardial sinus. That means the blood is now in this pericardial sinus. So from this ostia, the blood 
enters into the chambers. So from here it is going to go inside the heart and again it will be sent to the head sinus. So the flow of hemolymph or blood is from heart it goes through aorta into head sinus. From head sinus it goes into perivisceral and perineural sinus. And from both these places it goes to pericardial sinus. And from pericardial sinus it again enters into the heart. So this is how the hemolymph or the blood which is normally the fluid known is known as is going to circulate. So when we saw the transverse section we were able to see only three sinuses because we cut the body transversely. We saw the upper sinus, middle and the lower. But when we draw this kind of a diagram, we see all four sinuses and the blood gets filled into these sinuses. All the organs which are there in this uh, sinus, those are dipped in hemolymph. That means there is a direct exchange of substances between the hemolymph and that particular organ. And this is what is called the open circulatory system. As we already know that the hemolymph is without any respiratory pigment and that is why it is whitish or pale yellowish in color. Normally there is a pigment like hemoglobin which gives the color to that fluid. So as there is no pigment here we do not see any color and that is why sometimes instead of calling it blood it is known as hemolymph because it looks like lymph but works like blood. So hemolymph, two things combined. So this is how the circulation takes place. Heart is 13 chambered. Contraction of heart is postero anterior. This is how it contracts and it is held by alary muscles. The alary muscles are paired which are attached on either side of each chamber. 13 chambers are there and it is a tube like structure so we call it a tubular heart. So after discussing the circulatory system in the next video we will take up another system of